everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Tanika and you guessed it, I'm pale as fuck. Being pale can be a real struggle sometimes and if you are too, I'm sure you've encountered some situations like these. Ooh, Ivory, this should be a good match. Oh, not again. Man, I look tired. Let me brighten up these under eyes. Well, that did nothing. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to try out my new country kit. Ah! Maybe if I just keep blending. <laughs> you know what? I think a nude lip should bring this look together. Oh. Oh my god. Abort. Abort. Way too nude. Way too nude. If you feel these struggles, then keep on watching as I share with you my best beauty tips and products for pale skin. You need to wear it. I am a sunscreen freak. Just ask anyone I know. A facial SPF is important for every skin color, but if you have pale skin, then you need to be wearing it because these harsh sun rays affect us 10 times more. Two of my favorite facial sunscreens are this one here by Mecca Cosmetica and it's called To Save Face and it's a 30 plus. And the next one is by Alpha H and it is their Protection Plus Daily 50 Plus Sunscreen. Obviously the Alpha H is a 50 plus so it offers more protection. This one is a thicker consistency and has a bit of a funky smell. Whereas the Mecca Cosmetica is only a 30 plus. It has a thinner consistency and it has a really, really nice smell. So you do have to keep in mind that even though it's a really nice smell, it's got a lot of fragrance in it. So if that affects your skin, then you know, I'd probably go the Alpha H. When you are pale and have redness on your skin, it just shows up 10 times more vibrant, which I know we're all stoked about. So you can buy color correcting primers, such as the Stila One Step Correct or the Smashbox Photo Finish Color Correcting Primer. But if you just want to correct a few little spots on your face, then you can use a green color correcting concealer. These are the types that I prefer to use as I just get a lot of redness where I've had previous pimples or where my scars show through. So you can pick up ones like the LA Girl Pro Concealer in Green Corrector or the Urban Decay Naked Skin Color Correcting Fluid. These are used by just applying a little bit to any red spots on your face, blending it out, and then once you apply your foundation over the top, the redness will be gone. This would have to be the number one problem and it sucks big time. A lot more brands are starting to cater for us pale folk. So here are a few of my favorite options for foundation. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless and it is in the shade 110 Porcelain. This foundation has a very neutral undertone and a medium coverage. Next is the Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hour Nude Foundation in the shade 10 Light Porcelain. There are a few different options with this foundation. I prefer the option with the white lid. The red lid is the same shade but it has a lot more of a pink undertone to it whereas the white lid is more neutral and this foundation has a medium to full coverage. Next is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the shade Snow. Again this one has a neutral undertone and around a medium coverage. Next is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid in the shade NW10. This foundation has a full coverage and is super super pale. If you go to your nearest MAC counter you can get Color Mash and they will give you a free sample for you to try out. I also know that the brands Illamasqua and Lancome have some foundations catered for pale skin. So go to your nearest store and check them out because they do have some great options. Another option you have if you are absolutely in love with the foundation but it's just not the right shade are color adjusting drops. So this is pretty much just a white liquid and you add a drop or two to your foundation until it is the right shade for you. I personally haven't used these because I do have foundations that match my skin but I know that brands such as Australia Australis and The Body Shop do make these. Another major struggle when it comes to having pale skin is trying to find a concealer light enough to highlight under your eyes. You see people all over YouTube and Instagram using a lighter concealer to highlight under their eyes, but when I grab the lighter shade and try and use it, 
it just matches my skin tone. I really like concealing under my eyes though because I find that it finishes off the base to your makeup and gives a really nice flawless look. So a few concealers I have found that are light enough for highlighting under your eyes are the NARS Creamy Concealer in the shade Chantilly. This is a super, super light concealer. It has a very thick formula and a very full coverage. So if you're not so much into that, another great one to try is the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer in the shade Fair Neutral. This has a much more lightweight formula, but still has very decent coverage. I like to use that one for everyday wear because it's just perfect. Some more concealers I want to try are the Tarte Shape Tape. So once I get my hands on those, I will have a review coming for you. And also the Kat Von D Concealer Creams because she has like a pure white option and then obviously some very, very light options. I then use a different concealer shade for hiding blemishes on my face. So you don't want to use these light shades because it's going to highlight that spot. So some of my favorite concealers for matching my skin tone are the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the shade 15 Fair and also the NARS Creamy Concealer in the shade Vanilla. This is yet again another tricky one for pale people. To contour, you need to use a cool brown shade, no warm shades. Warm shades are not going to create that shadow that is needed to sculpt the face. I always go in with a really light hand too. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. I suggest trying out the Makeup Geek Contour Pans. So they are categorized by cool or warm skin tones and then categorized by your shade. So you've got porcelain, fair, medium, and deep. This is super helpful as it narrows it right down so you can get the perfect contour shade. The shade that I use from Makeup Geek is called Breakup and this is in the cool porcelain category. Another one of my most favorite contouring products is an eyeshadow by Elamasca in the shade Hair. It is just perfect. And then one of the only contour kits on the drugstore market I found with a contour shade cool enough is by Revlon and Chloe Morello and it is the contour kit in the fair category. Now bronzing and contouring are two different things. Contouring is to sculpt the face, whereas bronzing is to bronze the face and give you that natural glow. With pale skin, you can use more of a warm tone bronzer. You just need to make sure it's not too orange. We want to look like we have some life and color to our face, not like we're bloody workers at Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. If you're just starting out wearing bronzer for the first time, I suggest trying the Too Faced Milk Chocolate Soleil Bronzer. This is a fairly light matte bronzer, so it'll add that touch of color to your skin without making you look crazy. Another bronzer that I really love is the NARS Laguna bronzer. This is a bit more of a darker shade and it has a really beautiful golden sheen through it which just gives a really gorgeous glow to the skin. Now here I am talking about that beautiful shimmery stuff we put all over our faces. For pale skin I find that a pearl or a white champagne gold color is what complements us most. These colors just blend into the skin so naturally and it makes it look like you have this glow just from within. Becca Pearl and Moonstone are two of my absolute favorites, but if you're after something a little bit more natural, then I suggest trying out MAC Light Scapade. A great drugstore version for a highlighter and a bronzer is the Rimmel Cake Kit in 002 Coral Glow. So as I said, this comes with a bronzer, a highlight, and a blush, and they all suit my pale skin beautifully. It is a really great product and definitely a good buy if you're not ready to invest in some higher-end products. Do you have no eyebrows and blonde eyelashes? Join the club. If you haven't tried already, then I suggest getting your lashes and your brows tinted. This is just a temporary dye that lasts for around four to five weeks, and it makes me look a little less alien-like when I'm not wearing makeup. Even when my brows are tinted, I still like to fill them in because I have a lot of sparse areas, but when they are tinted, it makes it so much easier to fill in. It's like I just have this guide and it's like bam, bam, done. And as for my lashes, when they aren't tinted, my blonde hairs still peep through even when I have mascara on. But when they are tinted, I don't even really need to wear mascara because they are nice and dark and they look more full and luscious. 
If you're not too keen on getting your eyelashes tinted, then this is another way to still make your eyelashes look full from the roots. This can take a little bit of practice as it is a tricky spot to get to and it does feel a bit weird at first, but once you've nailed it, you'll never look back. I just use a black eyeliner pencil to get up in there and fill in that tight line. If you find black's a little bit too harsh for you, go in with a brown as it's going to look a bit more natural. And then if this is still a bit tricky for you, go in with some eyeshadow on a very thin brush and place it directly into your lash line. Just press it in there and it'll make your lashes look fuller. I think the hardest thing when it comes to lipsticks is trying to find the perfect nude. You don't want to go too nude, otherwise it's going to look like you've just got concealer lips. So I personally like to go for a nude lipstick with more of a pink beige undertone to it. I have a whole video on my top nudes for pale skin, so I will link it down below. So check that out if you want. But two of my favorite nudes are Blankety by MAC and from the drugstore, I love the lipstick shade Mumbo by Astralis. And then when it comes to darker or brighter shades, I think it's just a matter of trial and error. There are guidelines out there that say if you're cool undertone, then wear cool undertone shades, but I say don't even worry about that. I have a bunch of lipsticks that are warm undertoned and I love wearing them. When you're out shopping and you want to get a bolder colour, just hold the lipstick up to your face like this, suss it out and see if you like it. And then if you do, just get it and wear it. I'm pretty much open to wear any lipstick shade, but over the years I have found some colours that I do not like on me. So a really, really bright Barbie pink like this colour. Mm -mm. And I'm also not into them really mauve tones. I think they're really pretty, but on me, I'm just not a fan. So just try them out, see if you like them, see if you don't. What's the harm? Also, if you're just trying to wear a bold or a bright lipstick for the first time, I suggest going with a neutral eye look and then making the bold lip the focus. But you know what? There are no rules to make up, so do whatever you want. Well, I hope this video helped you out in some way today, and if you enjoyed watching, then please give it a thumbs up for me. If you're after any other pale skin related videos, then check out my playlist that I will link below. And if you can't find what you're after, then leave me a comment and I will get straight onto it. Makeup can be tricky for people with pale skin, so I am here to help you. I will have all the products I mentioned listed in the description box below, as well as some other suggestions. And if you have any questions, then just drop me a comment. Come follow me on Snapchat and Instagram. And last of all, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos. I'll see you all next time. Bye!